So I'm going to walk you through a journey of a very new researcher called Stephen, who is trying to understand how to write a literature review like a pro. And I'm suggesting that he will do this with the aid of an artificial intelligence too. If you are interested in seeing how Stephen journeys through the use of AI, then sit back and relax as I walk you through this video. So as we get started, I want to introduce to you Stephen, who is an undergraduate student who has just started undertaking his project and he wants to write a literature review. There are these essential steps that you have to be aware of. The first thing that Stephen needs to do is what my supervisor told me, you know, when I was in his position. He told me that if you want to do a literature review, you need to immerse yourself in all the papers that relate to the topic of your research. And the idea that I remember vividly in my mind that, you know, he gave me was that, you know, research is like a wall of knowledge and every piece of contribution is a block that you put on that wall of knowledge. And so what Stephen's research is going to be about or what my research is going to be about is essentially a block on that wall of knowledge. And the idea is that everyone is building on this wall of knowledge so that ultimately at the end, when the wall of knowledge is completed, then your own individual contribution should be one block on that wall of knowledge. And so if you want to then review all the literature pertaining to the topic of interest, you need to understand what that wall of knowledge is. You need to explore all the contributions people are making in that world of knowledge, in which case you need to immerse yourself in to spend a lot of time staring at this wall of knowledge so that you understand every contribution that people have made with regards to the research that you're doing. And allied to that is the second step, which is where you quickly read all the papers that relate to the topic that you want to write about. And by reading all the papers, some of these papers are quite long. They are also quite difficult to understand, especially considering that this is Stephen's first approach in writing a literature review. So it can be quite challenging to read all the papers. And so there has to be a strategy in reading all the papers. And we'll talk about the strategy and how AI can help him in doing this. The third step in writing a literature review clearly will involve you writing summaries of all the papers that you've read. You need to make a mental note or possibly a physical note for yourself of what all these papers are about, what are their contributions, what are their limitations, all this kind of stuff, so that ultimately you see how these things will relate to the work that you want to write about. And that's by going back to the imagery. You're staring at this wall of knowledge and say, okay, the block, this particular knowledge is relevant to what I want to do. And you write summaries, paper summaries, of what you see from your literature review. Then the first step is making a critique of the literature. The essence of a literature review is to critique the literature, to review the literature. And by critiquing that literature, you want to identify first the contribution of the paper that you're looking at towards the research topic you want to work on. And then the second aspect to that is what is the limitation of that piece of work with respect again to the object of your research. So, and then finally, you take that information and add your voice. You add your own contribution to that knowledge by reflecting and reviewing and speculating and discussing around what you have with respect to the limitation, the contribution and the relevance of that work to what you're trying to do. The final step is then combining all the summaries that you have done into a coherent piece of story writing where you take all the summaries that you've got add them all up together into a current piece of writing paraphrase them rearrange them combine them get them into an official structure that will then critique and connect everything that you want and that's the five steps that Stephen needs to be aware of if he wants to write a literature review. But it's one thing to know all these things, but it's another thing to actually do it. For someone who is quite experienced in research, yes, you can easily go ahead and start doing all that. But we're going to trust a software to help Stephen quickly master these pro skills of writing a literature review. And the software that we're going to, go, we're going to use is a software called SciSpace. So usually what I will do is to just go to my browser and write Sci space.com and you enter so it takes you to this environment 
clearly the developers of SciSpace are transiting from the website to a new website. So SciSpace is simply a holding page for now. In future, hopefully, it will become an active page. But currently, the software is hosted on typeset.io, which is the current website, and they're saying until 2024, sometime in 2024, it will be available for it for the migration so we we'll just click on the arrow and we get into the space so this is currently where the software is sitting and if you want to get hold of the software there is a link in the description section of this video it's an affiliate link that you know you can click on and then it gives you direct access to the software and, and how you're going to use it. So I'm going to demonstrate to Steven how we can actually start working on this project. So we get into this environment. Let's just look at what SciSpace can do. First, there's a literature review. There is an ask questions on PDF where you have a question on a PDF that you load onto this and then you ask SciSpace questions about what it can do for you. You can extract certain sort of data you know, from graph, because again, this is essential if you're doing a literature review and you want to use some of that information. There are certain data that you may need, you can extract that as well. You can also do a paraphrasing of whatever you want, which is basically like what we're going to describe later on where you need to rearrange and paraphrase and rearrange the information you have. But we are going to focus on the first part, which is a literature review. And looking at the sort of questions that he wants to, it gives you some ideas about the questions that Stephen can ask. For example, how does climate change impact on biodiversity? So you want to ask an open-ended research question that you want uh, science space to begin to give you ideas around. And that's sort of beginning to get immersed into this wall of knowledge relating to the area of your research. So we're going to explore the research that Stephen is working on. And that is... Something that I've already typed out here, how do I undertake a virtual testing of a biodegradable coronary artery stent? So this is something taken from the research, one of my research areas. And so the first thing you'll notice once you've done this, you put the information is the first step is where you immerse yourself in the literature. And in the area of the topic of this concern, we instantly find that there are insight, you can get insight, understanding of top five papers. If you want to get more, a subscription will give you more access to 10 papers. And this is really important because in immersing yourself in the literature, you want to see as much as what information is on that wall of knowledge. So there's no need only focusing on the few. You want as much information as possible. And also you want the ones that are most relevant. So if you're going to make a contribution to the wall of knowledge, you want as much of the relevant papers to the contribution you're making and not just a few, but a large number of them. But this free version has only access to five papers and instantly it identifies the five papers and gives you a summary, which is really important because it gives you an abstract of what the thinking is within this world of knowledge. If you don't have size space, you would have then had to come up with these summaries yourself. And also it cites where that information is taken from. So the second step is where you're trying to quickly read through the literature to understand what is required, how will size space help you? So if you look at here, the first paper that is identified here says 3D printed coronary offer, and then it doesn't have any particular insight for us. But then there is this column where it talks about the TLDR. This is too long, didn't read, which is another word for really saying a summary, a quick summary of the paper. Remember how we said that he need to quickly read the paper. So instead of reading all the papers here, there is a quick summary that he can quickly read and that will help him with his work. So what I would normally do is, what Stephen would need to do is to copy this paper into a Microsoft Word document and provide this summary for himself. So that's the first thing. So you've got the paper and into a Microsoft Word document and then you've got the summary of that paper. Okay, so for the, the next paper, so if we click on that link, it takes us to more details information about the paper from SciSpace. So this is its own repository where it holds this information and it gives you more information about it. So the summary, the summary of the paper and then the abstract of the paper. And then you could ask it a lot more information about this particular paper. So especially if you're interested in diving deep as to what's going on with this paper. So you can tell it, explain the abstract in three, in two lines. You know, what are the conclusions from the papers? What are the results from the papers? The kind of information you want to ask if you are interested in diving deeper into a paper of interest. You only do this if there is a paper that is particularly relevant for you. If you think about the ideology, the analogy we made earlier on, you've got a wall of knowledge you've identified. 
a brick on that wall of knowledge is super important to what you want to do then you want to go close to that brick extract that brick understand with details the composition of that brick and that's essentially what size space is helping us to do here so if we click on that link it comes out so now what it's doing is that it's calling copilot which is artificial intelligence software to help explain what is going on here you may even get high quality content high quality in, in output and a standard output from copilot by clicking on that but again you need to upgrade and the link in the description section of this video with an affiliate link that can help you get hold of this software so once you have used the insight and the tldr options what that does do is that it helps you accumulate paper summaries of the papers that you want. And this is sort of what you will see here. So paper summaries on this topic. So this is the first paper. Same thing for the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So this way you are gathering as much information for the relevant papers that you want to do. And with this paper summary, we can now move on to the third step. And that step is where you begin to write and develop and formulate your literature review. So to write a literature review, it makes sense to assemble the information you have according to themes. So let's look at what this option so let's get one of the options so we can ask this system to help us with a theme so let's just go to standard and we can ask a question so so I've asked is what is a key theme for this research in just a few keywords because this is really important so in the end it gives us some themes for the research and this is important because you need to write according to certain themes so in this research it's identified these themes and so what i what i could then do is to just copy those themes then you can paste under that paper what are the themes so i could come here and call and write themes so what about the parametric optimization option so which is the next one so again i click on that i could then try and probe and say again what are so again once i've done that i would see what options that it gives me the idea is that you are using this software to categorize the essential themes that influence what you're trying to do so it gives us something a bit more so again we'll come back under here and paste that information so development of personalized biodegradable stems okay 3d printing as well hydrogel composition so now there's a new word that is coming here called hydrogel composition so clearly this is the relevant of this paper so it's about the material uh, printing variables so there's the concept of printing variables which again we can note the printing variables mechanical properties so a new topic under mechanical properties so these are new themes that we're identifying and biocompatibility is also another theme so you can see this a slight difference between the themes is assembling for this topic for this paper and the themes from the other paper mechanical properties are there fe analysis relevant in this so the idea is that you begin to find what common themes apply for a certain paper and at the end those themes will form a category of investigation for your literature review we are recommending that you use a thematic approach in your literature review so let's do that for one more paper so let's get this paper which it says about experimental and numerical simulation of biodegradable stents so again if i go there i can use copilot to probe a little bit more okay so i want a really few keywords highly summarized and then we'll see what it will give us so i'm asking you to write list five five three word maximum themes addressed in this paper so right away it simplifies it for us and this again is a clue as to how you can actually do this the prompt that you need so the first so let's just copy all these themes then we can paste it right underneath here so these are the themes that are essential for for this particular topic if you are interested in this general academic journey um, kind of discussion around ai tools and how you can use it for the short review and other academic part please do subscribe to this channel i make videos like this to support students as they journey through the academic life and particularly how AI is impacting what we do as academics. So by the time Stephen has completed this, so he's beginning to classify different themes that apply to different papers. And the next step is the actual writing process. All this while he's been doing extensive research, researching into everything. What would the writing process involve? Now he needs to see what themes are common to the papers that he has assembled. And then begin to pick the essential themes, the most dominant themes. So what are the things that are relevant as a theme so you find that 3d printing technology is important theme for this work mechanical properties evaluation is also important so that could be a second theme uh, computational analysis fe analysis 
experimental implement so experimental implementation in animal models is not a common theme so if you look at this case 3d printing technology is coming mechanical properties is a common theme biodegradable stents is again a common theme so he's already beginning to find a trend so we look at the last one performance evaluation mechanical is important numerical analysis is a common theme so by the time he assembles all these common themes he will categorize them in let's say five themes that define the literature that you start studying and with those themes he begin to write under them what he's trying to do so with the writing because you want to be ethically correct in your use of air you really have to get your hands dirty and do some writing the essence of the research that you've done is to explore as wide as possible but actually you need to do your writing yourself and then of course the final step is where you're trying to review and review and review and one of the things that people can do let's say you've done some writing is to go back to size space and then you can tell it to paraphrase the information so let's say try some sample text so this so this is an artificial intelligence sample text. So let's say you've got some section of your literature review and you're particularly not happy the way it's sounding and you want it to paraphrase for you. So you can copy and paste your information, that section that you've written that you're not very comfort comfortable and happy with and tell it to paraphrase. So what would it do? So it comes up with this window and then it paraphrases that information. It still has same information. You want, maybe you can tell it to shorten the length of what it's paraphrasing so that it becomes shorter maybe you want to condense that information but still capture the essence of it what about the variation do you want it to be similar or less changes or more changes so let's say you really want to go out on a limp and make a lot of changes you can tell it to paraphrase and it's all okay to do this but remember in the end it's your piece of work that you're writing and everything you copy into an ai tool you're making it really available for people to use so you've got to be really careful how you use this the paraphrasing option is a useful option it helps you and then you, it's got also some ai detection which you can do to try and find do you have where ai is and clearly it's saying that there is ai for the first and the second thing the, it's an ai detector within the software that can detect things but I also want to warn you that AI detection is not in a, a clear science. It's still something that is evolving. And at times, some of your own text can be deemed to be AI detected. So now that Stephen has completed this, the question that you may be interested in is what's the preference for size space? Can I do the same with something like ChatGPT? Can I do the same with Copilot? Of course you can. And if you want to see how you can do this, then I've made this video that can help you understand how to use other AI software tools other than SciSpace to do this. Thank you for interest in this video and bye-bye.